Today is the culmination, one culmination, of work that youth leaders, Connecticut Voices, and many of you have been doing for many years with the financial and other support of the Jim Casey Youth Opportunities Initiative. This is your day. This is your chance. Talk to us. Don't be afraid. Don't feel intimidated. Advocate for you and advocate for your brothers, your sisters, the kids you talk to, the neighbors you see, and the kids that you've seen around the area. Thank you. Thank you so much for this opportunity. And I've met some of you as I've traveled around the state, and I'm really looking forward to hearing more from you as we take on the challenges together. You are, all of you are my children. People say to me, how many children do you have? And how did I go from having three to 4,700? Um, in one fell swoop, but it's really been an honor, truly an honor the past eight months to serve you, and I look forward to better partnering. Thank you so much for your contributions. And let me, let me just say it is great to be here with all of you, and congratulations. Thank you for serving on your advisory boards. Thank you for being involved. You all come from different paths and different backgrounds, but you're all here to really voice your opinions, hopefully. You know, it's kind of interesting because you, if you really believe in something, you can make it happen. I really do believe that you can fight for it. And I want to tell you a quick story. Decades ago, before you were born, um, <laughs> probably, um, I was a young mother having two young kids, and I didn't like what was going on in the local board of education in my town. So I ended up finding this person to call to say, I knew nothing about politics, I knew nothing. I called this guy up, and I, he was happened to be the Democratic town chairman, and I said, Mr. Skelly, uh, I'm really having a problem with the Board of Education. Um, I'd like to talk to you. And he said, well, I'm going out for a run. I said, well, call me back. And he said, well, what's it, what's it all about? I said, I'd like to impeach the Board of Education. <laughs> and he just wanted to know if I wanted to impeach the Republicans. And I said, no, I want to impeach the whole Board of Education. I don't think those are the words we used, but it was something like that. And I realized the next thing I knew, to be honest with you, I ended up serving on the Board of Education. I served and then state representative as state controller for 16 years and now lieutenant governor. And what I learned from all that, my background was not of politics or anything else, but when you feel a passion, when you care about something so much, you find your voice. And your voice is the most powerful, I think, most powerful thing that you have inside of you because you can express yourself and you can tell people what should be done. I will tell you at the last part of this that you can impeach a president, but you can't impeach a board of ed. But I found that out later. <laughs> I found that out later, but thank you for what you're doing here. We need you not only for fighting for yourselves, but just don't forget, there's a community around you, there's a state around you, and you're the ones that are going to end up leading it. So please get out there and use your voice. Well, we're here to listen, and, and that's really what this is, day is supposed to be about. But I will just say I'm delighted to be with you. My, my work life has been mostly about health care. Uh, but as Jamie pointed out, my home life, two of my three kids uh, were in the foster care system before they came to live with me, uh, but in a different state. Uh, and they were three and six, and they had been in six different homes. Um, and when I first went to visit them, uh, there were a number of other kids at the table. Um, and so sometimes at holidays and on special occasions and birthdays, I think back to that first day when I stared at our middle son now. Uh, he was eating a bologna sandwich on white bread with mayonnaise, which is wrong for so many reasons. Um, uh, and I wonder about the other kids sitting around the table and what are they doing on their birthday? And what are they doing around the holidays? And sort of how might our community be different if every one of those kids at that home had a, a community around them that cared and supported, that cared about them and supported them, and a family that loved them no matter what. Uh, so I am really looking forward to what you have to say today, uh, and uh, I look forward to it. Thanks. I am a junior in high school, and I'm in DCF care. What I'm not understanding is that I don't really talk about college. I don't talk about college with my, my worker because she doesn't bring it up. And I'm not planning on staying in this year, but in the meantime, I would like to get the help and support like to encourage me to go to college because I'm really not getting that support. Out of all of you that went to school, um, number one, were you able to go to the school that you were in before or were you moved, how many times were you moved around if you were moved around? And I just wanted to ask the audience how many people here have been moved around from school to school so that um, more than one time in their existing high school or college or undergraduate program? So all of you, okay. 
and from the panel, have you all been moved around from high school to high school or school to school? Yes. Okay. All right. Thank you. I have um, two brothers and one sister. Uh, one brother is older. Uh, the other two are younger. Um, you know, I, I got to say it's really a sad story. Um, you know, through, through DCF, we were split up. Um, aside from one very temporary placement, uh, we were never together. Um, and, you know, that's just the way I grew up. Uh, here I am, 22. Uh, all of them are grown, over 18, uh, and we don't have a relationship. I'm also uh, a father. I was a father at a fairly young age. Uh, and it, it kind of pains me to know that, like, you know, my daughter doesn't have um, the, the relationship with her aunt and her uncles. Uh, and I kind of, I kind of wish it was there, and and I, you know, you know, I just wish she was able to grow up with them because I know what a difference it can make. Mm. In our meeting, we're not just coming up with these problems; we actually came up with solutions for them. Um, we have a case where someone we knew was 17, didn't know they had a brother or sister in care. They went to a group session. They found out, oh, we're brothers. When they asked a the social worker, the social worker said, because of confidentiality, you can say, but you could have still let someone know that they had a relative. That's not a very good way for people to be coming across knowing that they have a brother or sister in care. So it's those interactions that we're trying to discontinue and have these individuals know that, you know, you do have a brother or sister. If you want to communicate with them, you do have the opportunity. You do have the chance to do so. We had a panel a couple of years ago where some, some um, foster kids came and talked to us about family relationships and one of the one of the foster youth said I would also like to have a relationship with my mother and that was that that set a lot of people back because they said well part of the reason why um, you are not there is because your mother had a problem or an issue and the kids said but that's my mother no matter what happens, I want to have a relationship with my mother. Is that on the priority with you also, as, long, as well as having contact with your siblings? Just curious. Well, not me personally, <laughs> so I, but I don't know. I, I've never really talked about it much with anyone. To fully answer your question, that would be on a person or a case-to-case -case basis. Um, there's different individuals who like to cut ties, but that is true. Um, the courts do make a decision, and it's always in the child's best interest, but sometimes people don't actually ask the child. So, like, that is a very natural context. Like, it's not your best interest to see your sister. That's my sister. You know, you have those bonds that you created before, so those are definitely important things. And, again, it will go on an individual-to-individual -individual basis.